Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And my mum and her boyfriend have just gone away for a week and so this is my first evening in a free house and oh my goodness, it feels so nice. Not that I don't love them, I love them to bits, but you know how sometimes you just need a bit of your own space and it feels really good. So I've put my pyjamas on, I have poured a large glass of wine, cheers, and I thought it would be fun to just get the camera rolling, do some planty things. I've got some repotting that I've been meaning to do for a while and have a chat and yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I've been wanting to do for quite a while is to divide my big alocasia fry deck. I mentioned this in a video the other day because it's beautiful, it's big, but it's getting very crowded in that part. I've got lots of different bulbs that have sprung up and although it looks gorgeous, it looks really happy and full, I'm watering this plant literally every other day at the moment, which is a little bit excessive. And I just feel like the plant would be healthier if it has a little bit more root space. So I'm gonna divide it. I'm gonna take out some of the babies and pot them up individually. I'll wait and see what it looks like with just the big main mother plants, because if it looks a bit bare, then I might keep a few in there, but I'm gonna get it out and have a look and we will see. So, oh, I've gotta be very careful not to knock my wine over now. I'm not used to filming with a glass of wine. It's quite nice. So a lot of my plants kind of face one direction because I don't turn them very often and I don't mind that. But this one, as you can see, is really kind of 360 in her growth. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about how I put her down. I tied some string around her a while ago just to kind of hold her up a bit. So I'm just going to take that off and hope that she comes out of this pot fairly easily. <laughs> just realised you can't even see my face. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that she comes out fairly easily. I did give her a water earlier on today, so I'm hoping that should make this a little bit easier. Oh yeah, oh wow. Okay, yeah, I don't think I even need to hold that up to the camera. I think you can probably see this one has got a lot of roots on her and I kind of suspected like she is a very, very big fairly mature plant and I did think her root system was going to be good but that is that is some crazy roots I'm trying to find a way to put her down so that I don't damage any of her leaves okay I think she's secure so this week when my mum and her boyfriend are away they've given me the responsibility of keeping on top of the garden and they've got quite a big, very slopey garden. And oh my God, I thought my watering took a long time. At this time of year, theirs takes about two, three hours a day. And I thought this week was gonna be really chilled and just, I don't know, I'd just be able to kind of get on with my own stuff. And all of a sudden I feel like I've got so much to do. Like I'm getting up early in the morning and I'm doing my watering for my plants, taking Yoli out for a walk, then taking my mum's dog out for a walk because they can be a bit funny together. And then I'm feeding her cat, feeding her goldfish, and then watering her garden. And all of a sudden, the day today has just seemed to go. And I'm like, oh God, what have I done? So it's nice to be able to just have a little bit of time now to film and chat to you guys and do some planty things, which is just so, so, so lovely. And also then, as of the end of next week, my mum is going to be, she's going to be in charge of looking after my plants while I'm away. So... I think it's a fairly, I think it's a fairly even trade and I know she is absolutely terrified about doing it and to be completely honest I'm a little bit terrified as well because my mum is amazing with outdoor plants, not great with house plants and I've got a lot and I've got quite a few that are quite high maintenance at the moment so yeah I'm in the process of putting together a system whereby it should be incredibly easy for her. And I'm gonna make a video on it. So if any of you guys go away on holiday and you can only get someone in that is not a planty person and has no idea about plants, then hopefully it will help. But yeah, I will keep you updated on that. I'll be posting that after I come back from my mystery road trip that my friend's taking me on. So that will probably be in the next couple of weeks. But one of you in the comments earlier today actually said that I should get my mum to vlog <laughs> to vlog her side of looking after my plants and I thought that was brilliant I thought that was such a good idea and I messaged my mum straight away and I was like would you want to make a little vlog and she hasn't replied so we will see about that god these roots are so 
unbelievably tangled. I did actually think, I did think that this might take a while. I asked you guys to send in some questions on Instagram because I find them really fun to answer and I haven't done it in a while. So I will go through them. The first one's asking for an update on my Hoya Sarawak and I will do that shortly. I want to get through this first, but I will give you an update on her. She's doing, she's doing some interesting things at the moment, so I will do that shortly. I finished filming that video and I realised I completely forgot to give you an update on the Hoya Sarawak, Sarawak, I don't know which way you say it. But as you can see, it's doing really, really well. It's turning a really beautiful kind of... I don't know, I think it's getting a bit sun-stressed. Also, oh my God, my nails. I've literally just finished filming, so excuse the soil. But as you can see here, it's also giving me a little peduncle, which I'm kind of amazed about. I think it's probably gonna flower. So yeah, I'll keep you updated with that, but it's still kind of the apple of my eye. It hasn't given me any insane growth yet, but the fact it's trying to flower already is pretty incredible. So yeah, I love it. And then the next one is what's your favorite favorite plants at the moment so I actually had a video when I'm filming this today going up today about my favorite plants this month those are the ones that I've been really really loving at the moment this past month they've been giving me some amazing new growth and yeah I yeah I just have been really amazed by them I'll link that video down below if anybody wants to go and watch that but apart from the ones I included in the video I could have included so many more, to be honest. My White Princess Philodendron, since I've got her on her pole, I've got a, I made a new moss pole for her and she's looking absolutely beautiful. And it just makes her look so much bigger already. Like I know that's such a weird thing to say, but I think sometimes if you've had a plant that hasn't been properly supported for a while, when you get it on a decent pole, it just kind of, it looks like it doubles in size. And I'm so proud of her. I think she's a lovely plant and I am just, yeah, she amazes me. I can't believe how quickly she's grown. So she's definitely one that springs to mind. My Hoya Angelata Red as well that I got in my Arid Market import. I never thought I would be saying that was one of my favorite plants because I was a bit like, ooh, that's unusual when I first saw it. But it's giving me so much new growth and it's really exciting me. So maybe, maybe that would be one, I don't know. What's your current dream plant? Oh my goodness, I have got so many. I've got a, a wish list on my phone and I just make a note anytime I see a plant and I'm like, oh, that's a nice plant. And I add it to my list. That list probably has about 50, 60 plants on it. And they're all kind of a combination of some rare, some common. One that I, oh, it's really hard to just pick one. One that I am really, really, ogling over at the moment is the Piper SP Thailand Silver. It's a plant that I wasn't even familiar with before and I saw it on Grow Tropicals website and it's beautiful. It's literally, it's just stunning. It's got those beautiful bluey leaves and it looks so delicate, but also so robust at the same time. Like it's got classic Piper vibes, like Piper Sylvaticum. It's got really, just like a very unusual look about it, but it's so pretty at the same time. Anthurium Warwickianum, I know, it didn't go very well with my last one. I am dying to add that plant to my collection again. I think it's just amazing. And I was so sad when my last one didn't make it. So that is definitely up there. I think those are my top two right now, if I had to say, but as I say, I have got, I've got a huge wish list. So if you would like to see a video on that, then do let me know and I'll happily film it. I always just kind of wonder with that sort of stuff if you guys would want to see it because I'm like, it's just me talking about plants that I really, really like. And is that something you'd want to see? I don't know, let me know. Um, but I'll happily do that. God, it's no wonder this plant has been drying out so quickly. I was wondering if maybe it was in a really bad quality soil or something, but these are just, these roots are just absolutely crazy. I can't quite believe it. I wasn't expecting them to be quite this much. I'm also very aware that I've started filming this video at seven o'clock in the evening and the light is going and I haven't got my light box set up or anything like that. So fingers crossed we don't finish this video <laughs> in complete darkness. <laughs> Someone said, is YouTube your main job? Interesting question. So yes and no. Um, this has actually been my first month as a full-time content creator, which I really don't like saying. I don't like content creator. I also don't really like saying YouTuber just because I think it sounds a bit ugh. Um, I haven't left 
my day job, so to speak. So if you're on my Patreon, you will know this already because I share everything with you guys over there. Uh, but last month I made a very, very, very big decision for me to leave my acting agent. It's, it's kind of been a long time coming and I don't know, although I wasn't getting loads of auditions, knowing that I still had the possibility of that, I felt like it was kind of holding me back in other areas of my life. And I really, really enjoy making these videos. I love doing planty things as more of a full-time thing. I mean, I was still doing editing until this month and I haven't stopped that either. But the decision to leave my agent was one that I kind of sat on for about five months. And I said to myself, if I'm still feeling like this in a few months, then I'll know it's the right decision. And yeah it was it was a big day it was a big day for me it was a really i don't know it's just it's something that i thought i knew a few years ago i thought i knew exactly where my life was going i thought i had it all planned out things were going really well things were really positive and everything has just kind of flipped and i'm not sad about that to be honest because i think actually i'm a lot more fulfilled and healthy and happy doing what i'm doing now um but so yeah, so I've been working, I've been working for years as an editor and I, I saw one of the other questions somewhere further up was saying what kind of editor I do. So I do still photography, I do motion picture, like short films, show reels, stuff like that. And I love editing, I really enjoy it. And so that's been kind of like my taking over job for quite a few years now. I mean, I've done it on and off for probably like eight years, but it's been, kind of full-time for the last couple of years and then yeah I obviously have been making more videos if you've noticed that I've been putting out a lot more content this month it's because this is the first month that I haven't taken on any editing work and I that's why I say like kind of full-time I'm not saying that I won't go back to editing because I think when I first move house especially I'm probably going to need a bit of extra cash so I will probably go back to that for a little while um but yeah it's it's a really weird thing to say and as god it's so not what i ever saw myself doing but at the moment currently as as i am yes i am a full-time youtuber but it's yeah i'm kind of finding my feet with it and i don't want to jump into something that like i don't know it's a youtube is kind of a very weird world and i didn't know anything about it until locked out when oh sorry got an itch <laughs> when i started um well my ex actually said to me get on youtube start like putting content out there and i had no idea i had no idea firstly that you could even make money on youtube that wasn't my aim at all when i started i had no idea that it could even possibly be a job at some point i just started it because i loved it and I found it fun and I thought it would be a good way of kind of building my confidence a bit, promoting my shop at the time, which nowadays is just pretty much non-existent, but it's just been a weird little journey and it makes me surprisingly happy and yes, it is, it's, it's paying me. So I, I can't complain if, if I could make it work full time, all the time, where like in the position I am right now, I would be very, very happy. That I think is the thing for me right now that would fulfill me so yeah that's a very long answer to a very short question but I hope that <laughs> I hope that answers it <laughs> right I'm gonna have to turn the plant a little bit and I'm gonna try and do it so that its leaves are kind of hanging off oh I don't want to damage any hanging off the table okay God, there's roots in here and I don't even know which end is attached and which isn't. I keep kind of going up to the top and it looks like it's doing a complete loop and I know it can't be, but it's just making this a little bit difficult. <laughs> Someone asked how Yoli is. How is Yoli? I mean, Yoli's good. I'm just trying to think what's new with her. What's new with her? Uh, yeah, Yoli's really good. She had a bit of a bad tummy recently. You don't want to know that um she's good she's full of energy and she is loving having ted who's my mum's dog to play with at the moment that's the one thing i'm a little bit worried about when i move although she's gonna have me pretty much all the time she's not gonna have another dog like at the moment where 
where I'm living back at home for the time being, she has got my mum's dog, Ted. And although we call them the terrible twosome because, oh my God, I'll tell you in a minute why they're so awful, but they love each other so, so, so much. And Ted is pretty much the only other dog that Yodi will play with. Like she's a rescue and she's so funny with other dogs. She can be really reactive and just not great, but she loves Ted so much and they do play and they just make each other really happy. Like they're next door together at the moment and they groom each other. And whenever, whenever I bring Yoli up in the morning, she'll always wag her tail when she sees Ted. Oh, there is a big fly in here, go away. Yeah, they're literally best friends. And uh, the reason we call them the terrible twosome is so when, when I first moved back here, Yoli, so nowadays, Pretty much all of the time Yoli is on her lead, apart from when I go to a little place where I can let her off. It's kind of like a contained space so she can have a free run and be free and happy. But for various reasons, partly because she's so bad on the whole with other dogs, she can be a bit funny with some men. I don't know what her full history is. I don't know if there was some abuse there, but I suspect that there was. But anyway, at first, when I first moved back here, she was just muzzled and they were allowed to run together and they had certain spots that we used to call their bolting spots because they would get to these areas and before you could even grab them they were just off and it was so scary actually there was one time there was one time that they didn't come back for like 40 minutes and that was the point where I was like right okay they cannot be off the lead together it's just I, I can't not know where my dog is and it was stressful and it was really horrible and they had they had the best time ever they were off chasing rabbits or whatever they were doing but it was very very scary for me as an owner and now it's one of the reasons why Yoli a lot of the time is on her lead she's got like a 15 20 meter lead so she can still have a decent run on it and as I say I do take her to an enclosed space every week so that she can have a proper run there but yeah that's how she is she's good she's loving life right now she has just had a very big supper and is gonna go for a walk around the hill with me or I'm gonna take her for a walk around the hill after I have finished filming this video. So yeah, she's she is good, thank you for asking. <laughs> right, these are coming away but they're coming very slowly and I kind of need to get more of the soil away from the top before I can even think about dividing the bulbs and it is just, I mean, this is like the definition of root bound. It is being held together by the roots and it's so hard to get into certain sections. Like that middle bit is just solid. It's, it's proving very tricky. Ah, okay. So if you look in this bit here that I've just uncovered, you might not be able to tell on camera, but it kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of a lot smoother. And what has happened here, I've seen this so many times before because I have done it before and then regressed it afterwards. This is a plant that's been repotted but it, at some point but it hasn't had its root system broken up. It's literally just been lifted from one pot to another. And although, yeah, I mean, if they're quite the juvenile young plants, you can do that. If they've got a well-established root system, I never personally do that because although some of their roots will be able to kind of branch out and enjoy the nice new soil, a lot of the older ones will get very stuck in their position and they won't be able to move. And I think, oh, I think that's probably why it is so dense and compact in the middle here, because it's actually, I mean, this is, I would say this is probably about 90% core, the soil it's in, and that's not bad stuff, like, especially for alocasia, it can, it can do them really well, and I was wondering how it was drinking the water so quickly, and many reasons behind that, but I think part of the reason is because it hasn't been properly repotted at some point. Okay, I'm just going to try and work it's really in there. Damn it, I was going to say I'm going to try and work with this bulb here, but it's solid in there still. I really need to, maybe I need to give it a little squidge and try and break it up a bit more. There is soil going absolutely everywhere because as usual, I haven't done up my potting mat. I don't even know why I bother. I might as well just put a bin bag down or something like that. <laughs> but I never do up the corners of my potting mat when I'm filming. I think because it brings it up to like here and I feel like I'm always having to kind of lift myself over and I can't, <laughs> I can't focus. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get the vacuum cleaner out after this. Or not, I'm home alone. Maybe it can just be soily all week. Well, hey. 
The next question is, when are you moving to your new space? Good question. <laughs> um, so the last time I went for a viewing and saw the estate agent, they ambitiously said that they thought it could be mid-August, which is obviously in a few weeks. And I would love it if that was the case, but I just have a feeling it's going to take longer than I think because these things always do. So I would like to say end of August, beginning of September. I know it's been dragging on and on and on and that was the last place that then fell through and now there's this place that looks like it's all going to be fine but until it's done you just don't know do you? So I honestly I am desperate to get in there. I am being so sad. I'm literally like looking at pictures of it every day. I shot a video of it when I went around to look at it the first time and I keep watching that video back and I'm like oh I already know where all my plants are going in my head because I'm really sad and I literally just think about these things way too much. I don't know where, I don't know where the big stuff's going to go. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put my sofa yet or <laughs> anything like that. I mean, I, I kind of am. I've got a few ideas. Uh, but yeah, I know, I know where pretty much all of my plants are going to go. And I feel, I feel very prepared. I feel like if they were to say you could move in tomorrow, I'd be like, cool. I'm already packed. I've been packed for about three months now because I was packed to move into the last place and then it didn't happen and I just decided to stay packed so <laughs> so yeah I'm ready to go and I will of course keep you updated I oh aha we may have movement on this one um yeah I'm very excited to show you guys when I move to show you my new place because it's it's not particularly big but it's perfect it's so perfect for me Yoli and I hope all the plants like I can't tell if either I'm going to get in there and it's going to feel really empty because currently most of my plants are in one room and when they're spread out it's going to feel really weird or I'm going to get in there and it's going to feel really overcrowded because I've got so many plants. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. I'll take you with me for the journey and you can, you can see how it all plays out. <laughs> okay, this one is budging a little bit so I'm gonna just try and work in, on getting this little bulb out. I say little bulb, this is actually a fairly big plant I'm taking out. Am I doing the right thing dividing this plant? <laughs> I mean I know I've started now, I kind of have to carry on. I'm just trying to imagine what she's gonna look like without all the little babies around her. She's gonna look quite bare for a while. I mean I know she will produce more bulbs but I'm just like, oh God, am I doing the right thing? I don't know. I mean, she needed to repot anyway, so I guess I am doing the right thing. Let me know what you would do in the comments. It might be too late by then, but let me know. <laughs> oh, okay. <gasps> it's coming. I've done it, finally. How long's it been? It's always been half an hour. I've probably cut around some of the long gaps, but yay. Cool, okay, we have one new plant. I'm gonna pop that one to one side. That, I mean, to be honest, in itself, that is actually quite a big plant. I think it's just because it's next to this huge bit. You don't think it's as big, but that's gorgeous. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Because I gave one of my smaller alocasia phrydex to one of my friends that came to stay the other day and I was telling her how much I love the plant and she was like, oh, it's so lovely. And I was like, I'll give you a bit. and. I gave her one of my smaller plants and then saying goodbye to her, I was like, oh God, am I ready to let you go? And I was like, mm. I mean, I'm obviously really happy that she's got the plant, <laughs> but I have now got more little plants. So I'm happy. I'm happy. Does anyone else ever get that? Like, I get so much joy from giving people plants. Like anyone that comes to my house, I'm always like, you can't leave without a, a planty bag. And I always burden them up with burden them up give them a load of stuff cuttings all that sort of stuff and hope that they will also catch the houseplant bug and we can talk about plants all day hasn't happened yet but i always get so excited to give the plants and then when i actually see them go i get a bit sad even though like if it's just a cutting i probably wouldn't even notice it anyway but i just i don't know i get so attached to them <laughs> oh Right, I was a little bit too vicious there. <laughs> okay, right, so you know what? It's not bad, it's not bad. 
Um, I am going to have a one leaf plant and I'm going to have this little plant. It's got roots. That's the main thing. It's got roots, but I didn't mean to snap it apart from the other little one. I'm going to have a one leaf plant here now that is firmly, firmly fixed in the soil. Um, but okay, right, that's that's plant number two. Again, a really pretty little plant that I might actually just pop back up with, assuming I can get this one out safely. I might pop back up with this one. Wow, the main bit of the mother plant is starting to emerge and look at that. So you can just see how, how hefty it is and that huge root there in the middle. I'm excited to see what she looks like by herself. I think she's going to look gorgeous, actually. I know I keep going back and forth because I'm not quite sure, but I think it's actually going to look pretty cool. The next question is trailing or climbing? This is a very good question. I I love both trailing and climbing plants, but thinking the place that my brain is at right now is thinking about plants in my new place and because it's got really sloped ceilings I'm not going to be able to have apart from in some bits where the slope is like it's like pitched at the top there I'll be able to have tall climbing plants but the rest of the place is gonna have to be hanging plants I think I mean I might it might be totally different when I get in the space and start kind of playing about and seeing what I can do but although I love both right now I'm really focused on trailing plants because I am imagining how I can make them work in my new flat so yes right now I would say trailing I've got so I know I did my hanging plant tour a while back but since I filmed that I would say I've probably got at least another kind of 12 13 plants into hangers I've got like this whole back space above me now you cannot fit another plant in it is literally just like if you look at it from the side I think it looks gorgeous my mum and her boyfriend are a little bit iffy about it but I think it looks beautiful. It just looks like a kind of suspended hedge of beautiful foliage and I think it's lovely. I can't wait. And this is exciting. I don't know. Is anyone else going to find this as exciting as me? Maybe not. But in the um, in the really tall points of my new place, I really want to get a pulley system so that I can have plants kind of suspended, hanging down, coming down from my ceiling, and then I can I can pulley them down to water them and I can pulley them back up to look nice afterwards. So I'm really excited about that to the point that I've already looked into pulley systems and everything, even though I don't know when I'm moving yet, but yeah, I'm really, like, really, really overly excited. If any of you have pulley systems for plants in your homes, can you, I mean, either drop me a comment down below. In fact, drop me a comment because it would be more useful for other people if they're thinking of doing it. But by all means, send me some pictures in email or whatever. Um, I would love to know about your pulley systems and what's worked and what hasn't. And ideally, I'd love to do a driftwood one, but... I just don't know how secure and sturdy that would be. I know they look lovely, but I'm not sure with a lot of plants how much weight they could take. But yeah, if anybody's got anything like that or knows anything about pulley systems, then please do let me know. <laughs> okay, this bulb is being incredibly stubborn, so I'm actually gonna move on to the next one and come back to that one at the end because it's still slightly attached to the mother plant and I can't get it out. That's my mum's cat asking for his second supper. Hello. Yes. Hello. Right, I'm just gonna feed the cat and I'll be back. Come on, come on. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. I have another, and again, it's got roots and it looks like a nice little plant. Just realized in doing this, I'm basically giving my mum a load more plants to look after when I'm away but hopefully they will all be slightly lower maintenance than the big one that I've got at the moment that needs watering every other day so yeah I hope that's not really easier as it's more to water but oh well oh my goodness okay I'm on a roll here so nearly there and again, that's a lovely little plant. That leaf there looks like, I mean, that is 
and I was not the oldest leaf actually. I was gonna say it looks like it's starting to turn a little bit. You can tell just like round there, it looks a little bit yellowy. Um, but I mean, again, it's a lovely little plant. So God, how many of these have I got now? I'm gonna have like a million fried eggs. I've got, hang on, I'll, I'll count them at the end, but there's gonna be quite a lot. I've got my soil bowl just filling up with them here. And actually, to be fair, it looks really pretty. I don't mind having loads of fried eggs. I love them. I literally love them so much. I would say they're probably one of my favorite plants. Someone asked what plants got you into house plants. Uh, to be honest, like again, as usual, I don't have an upfront or straightforward answer for that. Um, my nana used to have loads of African violets and I adopted an African violet from her. I knew nothing about houseplants and so I killed it fairly quickly. I mean, to be completely honest, the thing that initially got me into houseplants was just because I loved the look of them so much. It wasn't that I had fallen in love with plant care or anything like that at this stage. I just really liked the look of plants. And I know some of you have asked me in the comments before when I've said that I've got a couple of fake plants that my friend got me. You've said things like, well, why would, why would your friends get a planty person a fake plant? And it's because it started because I loved the look of them. And I did have some fake plants and my friends thought that I would love that. So even when I started getting into real plants, I was still getting fake planty things as gifts, if that makes sense. And yeah, I think just over time, like I, I didn't go full whack with my collection when I first started. I think I propagated a pothos plant, which is, well, you can't really see it. It's over there, I've shown you it before. There we go, you can kind of see it there. Um, but I propagated a pothos plant of, how long ago would that have been? I guess probably about four years ago. It's now taller than me, it's absolutely huge. And I found that so fun. And then I started getting into propagating the plants that I had. I think I probably only had about 20 or 30 at this point. And yeah, I just wanted to fill my house with them because I thought they looked lovely. And that's when I started finding that plant care was so therapeutic and so good for my mental health. I was just a lot of the time I was just an angsty mess before I found that sounds really dramatic, but I didn't have an outlet for my anxiety. I didn't have a way to tune into myself that felt right. I was trying all these kind of things like the women's circles, meditation groups. And I think those things are amazing. Like, please don't get me wrong. I did get stuff out of them, but I haven't got anything, anything out of it like I have done with plant care for me personally. And yeah, when I discovered that I had such a love for that then I think I kind of just wanted to challenge myself and I was like right what's the most difficult plant and I think I went for the leaf fig and I killed it um but I really dedicated a lot of time to Ooh. sorry this is really distressing I don't want to snap it I dedicated a lot of time to trying to get to know more about plants to learn about them to kind of figure out figure out their care needs all that sort of stuff and that is I think where the obsession began, I think before lockdown, I'd say I was probably close to about 100 house plants, which I mean, is still a lot. It is still a lot of plants, but I think we got it. Is it safe? Did we do it? Yay! Cool, we've got another one. <laughs> Yay, oh, that's a little one and it's got a new leaf coming as well. Sorry, completely going off subject now. Uh, someone was asking, do you repot plants if they've got new leaves coming? And I personally do. If it's, I mean, ideally you repot in growing season or when your plant is kind of actively growing and obviously this one is, it's producing a leaf. I repot all year round to be completely honest, but um, that is the answer to that question. What was I saying before? What was I saying before about plant care and getting into plants and the plant that got me into plants? I think looks wise, the plant that got me into plants and this is so cliche but it was probably the fiddle leaf fig just because it was in all the magazines and it was just such a like a trendy fancy plant and i thought i was like yeah i want one of those ah that's what we got to i killed a fiddle leaf fig um that was probably around about that time uh and also yes before lockdown i didn't count but i would say about 100 like my house was pretty full and then yeah 
it came lockdown time and I think like probably lots of us I just went a bit crazy and I was like if I've got to be at home all the time I love plant care I love plants I'm gonna get all the plants mm, this is the last one by the way I just need to be careful about this because this is the one leaf one in fact I might cut it okay I think that's done it perfect and it's got a root system amazing so oh my god so this is what we're left with this is the and i saw this going to go everywhere but this is the main mother plant and she's magnificent i think she's so gorgeous and look at that new leaf that's just unfurling there i think i think she's going to do very well just by herself in a pot to be honest and as you can see she has already got some new little bulbs coming up so i guess i'll just continue to divide them if if I want to. Right, let's put her, let's put her down again and let's just see how many plants I've got here. <laughs> so including the big mother plant, I've got eight. That is definitely more than I thought I would have. I didn't count the bulbs before I started doing this. So I think I'm going to put some of them together and some of them individually. And yeah, that is what I'm going to do. God, the root system on that mother plant is absolutely incredible. I do also think, so this is the oldest leaf on the mother plant. I have a feeling this one might be on its way out as well and not because the leaf looks yellow or anything like that. I just know the cycle of alocasia and like the base just feels a little bit, not as firm as it could. And quite often that means that they're dying off to make room for the newest leaf. So. If I lose that leaf, I will be sad, but I know that I'm getting another one, so it's not the end of the world. Um, right, I'm just gonna classic shove the soil to one side. And then I think, to be honest, I can probably, yeah, I can use the same pot for this one again, because obviously there's less root system, but I could even go slightly bigger. No, I don't want to throw it into shock. I'm gonna go with the same pot size for now and then if I need to if I need to move it up in a few months time then I prefer to do that I prefer to be safe than sorry so the soil that I'm using is just kind of like my standard mix that I'm using at the moment for most of my aroids it's just houseplant soil perlite orchid bark worm castings horticultural charcoal which are just things that I had and I just threw them because they're great and I've also put some pond in as well because I'm trying to get better at using pawn by itself, but I really just love mixing it in. Like it's good for retaining moisture and releasing nutrients and it just adds a bit of texture to the soil. And in my experience, my plants really love that. So yeah, that's what I have used. The next question is who, oh, you can't see me. Who are your plant world inspirations? I've got so many, to be honest, like, I mean, just the plant community in general, I'm always learning so much from you guys, so much from people that I chat to on Instagram or on Patreon or on Facebook groups or anything like that. But in terms of people that have inspired me, maybe to kind of get online and be a bit more like publicly active in the plant community, um, shout out to my friend Emma good growing I stumbled across her videos when I think I was looking for Swiss cheese plant on Stara Deliciosa tips and I really loved her and followed her for a while and now we're friends um people like Wild Fern, Harley G, Kaylee Ellen as well she's a another British plant youtuber and I love her I think she's just awesome I think the way that she speaks, I mean, a lot of these people to be fair, but the way that she speaks so openly about her mental health and her struggles with mental health and stuff like that in the past is something that really resonates with me. And I think she's one of the, as, as I say, there's many, but she's one of the ones that I would watch like way back in the day and way back in the day, a year ago, a couple of years ago. And I would be like, wow, that's so brave for you to share it. And that's really helped me. And it's made me feel like I can speak more openly about mental health and stuff like that on my channel. Um, who else? Oh, so recently, this guy is a very, well, not he's not recent in terms of the plant community. I think he's had plants for a while, but 
I followed him on Instagram for ages, never spoken to him, um, but he's, I can't remember his actual name, Sydney Plant Guy on YouTube. I came across his channel about three weeks ago and I was just like, oh my God, I love your videos so much. And you guys need to go check out the size of his plants because he, he was one of the reasons why I was like, right, I need to make new moss poles because the growth in his plant with the moss poles that he uses is just out of this world insane. The bearded plantaholic, Johnny, I I think he's just absolutely brilliant. I love people that don't take plant care too seriously and he's just hilarious. I love watching all his reels. He's mainly Instagram. I think he does have YouTube. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying he does have YouTube, but I don't think he is that active on there. Um, yeah, I think he's awesome. Crazy plant guy as well. <laughs> I'm just naming all the people that I watch, like whenever I'm doing plant chores and I'm feeling a bit a bit demotivated and stuff like that, I will always stick on planty videos just to kind of keep me company and keep me going. So it makes me really happy to think that maybe people do that with mine as well. So yeah, um, but crazy plant guy, again, I know he's not very active on YouTube nowadays because he's got his shop and everything, but his sense of humor is just absolutely brilliant. and. I love how he's just so himself and he makes me really happy to watch. I'm sure I've missed some. Um, Plant Arena, did I say Plant Arena? I mean, she's kind of, she's like mega on YouTube. I feel like most of you will know Plant Arena, but there's so many, to be honest, there's so many. I could go on and on and on about my favorite planty people. But as I say, these are people that are on YouTube or kind of, soil on the head, are kind of like, plant influences I do genuinely learn so much I mean just as much if not more from you guys in the community people that I chat to just like day to day and see your plant pictures and hear what's going on with your plants and get inspired by you like some of the ideas that you guys have given me have influenced videos that I've made like there's been so many things that I've seen and I've been like oh my god what a cool idea and I've been like I would love to make a video on that so yeah, it's it's just kind of, it's broad, it's it's broad. But the plant community is, it is just in general, the most wonderful community of people. And I've said this, I've banged on about this so many times before, but sometimes if I am thrown into a situation where I don't know many people, even if we all have something in common, it can be a bit like, oh, okay, right, this is a little bit awkward. And with any event, like planty event that I've been to, or I don't know, any like, any kind of like chats where I'm with planty people, it just seems to flow so much easier because I guess it's just kind of like people's relationship to nature and a lot of the time it kind of says something about them. It, I don't know, that might be a huge generalization, but for me, it usually says that you're very nurturing, you're responsible, you're, talk about myself here, <laughs> caring. <laughs> um, but I just, I find in general, people in the plant community very easy to get along with, so. Yeah, I can't remember the exact question now, but that was that was the answer to it, whatever it was. Okay, cool. So this is my big one now. Obviously she is looking a little bit bare, but I feel like this is just gonna encourage her to give me some ginormous growth. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'll keep you updated. And now I just need to go ahead Oh my goodness, and pot up the babies. I only bought a few pots over because I was like, I won't need many and Unless I cram a few together in the same pot, I might need to do a few in the same pot. This is not plant related, but someone said, if you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. Ooh. So I've got, I've got a lot of foods that I really like. And luckily for this question, I'm quite an obsessive person. Like, if I find a food that I like, I am the sort of person that could genuinely eat it for breakfast, lunch and dinner for probably six weeks until I move on to something else. A constant has always been, and this might be very random in terms of a food that I would only eat for the rest of my life. I love Japanese food. I love sushi so much. I am slightly obsessed with it. So yeah, I think that would be something that I could eat quite happily. Which plants am I doing? <laughs> Not thinking, I'm just thinking about food now. I think that's something I could eat quite happily for the rest of my life. If it's a cuisine, is it a cuisine or is it just a food? One thing. Okay, if it was a cuisine, however, I would probably say Italian. 
um, just because pizza, pasta, I love the diversity in it. I love the freshness of flavours. It's just, oh, it's so good. And yeah, I'm never not in the mood for a good bowl of pasta or a pizza. There's quite a few things to be honest, but I would say it's between those two, Italian and Japanese. Oh, my finger, oh. Does anybody get this? Like when you've been, you've had your hands in dry soil and you touch your fingers together and it's almost like running them over a oh, chalky board or something like that. I just, I really don't like it. I don't know why. That's a weird thing of mine. It freaks me out and I want to go and like wet my hands. Ooh, I don't like it. Okay, right. So these two little ones I'm going to put together and I mean obviously the root system isn't huge. I'm kind of thinking I could put them in this little pot but that might be, that might not be enough for them. No actually I think that will be plenty. I do I think that'll be plenty and I'm partly saying that because I'm running low on plant pots but I think it will genuinely be plenty. <laughs> Somebody asked, is there a plant you would absolutely not get? What and why? So I would probably say off the top of my head, an orchid, like I know they're really popular house plants. And I think I've said this before, I love the look of them at other people's houses or just like not in my space I don't know why like my mum's got a beautiful orchid over there and I'm fine with it but I I don't know I just personally wouldn't choose to have one just because they don't do anything for me like I think they're pretty I think they're a bit generic like that's a horrible thing to say isn't it um I don't know they just don't excite me in the same way as a lot of my other plants and yeah, I can really appreciate them. Like, for example, when my mum's blooms, which it is at the moment, it looks really pretty, but I have no desire to have it myself. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that would be the answer. I don't think there's any other plant, like, for any specific reason that I would be like, I'm never having you again. I don't think. Yeah, I think, I think there's not a plant that I would absolutely draw a line under, but... Yeah, orchid just does nothing for me. Jewel orchids, completely different kettle of fish, but standard, bog standard orchids, just, no, I'm just not a fan. What about you guys? If there was one plant that you absolutely would not get or would not get again, what is it and why? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> right, so obviously they're gonna take a while to kind of straighten up and look, start looking like plants, especially when I'm putting two bulbs together, but I think that one will be fine. I think that root system seemed to fit fairly well. I'm always wondering if I should sell some of these, to be honest, or give them away, because I, I'm obviously going to have a lot of them. I'm thinking I might kind of obviously let them adjust to their new environment and then line them up for friends' birthdays and stuff like that, because, I mean, it's a pretty nice present to get, isn't it? I would say if anybody is looking for an allocation for a deck, message me, but... The last few times I've said that I have just, I've woken up to like a huge stack of messages and I can't get back to all of them and then I feel bad. So um, maybe at some point I will list some on my Instagram story. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, yeah, let me think about that. I'm not going to say it after a glass of wine in this video because I'll probably regret it. Oh, there's a bloody wasp again. Go far! Go away! Ah! For you, I've got a humane spider catcher and it's really good at getting wasps and bees. So I'm gonna try and get it. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, I thought he'd gone. No, he's right there. Okay, I give up. I can't get him, so <laughs> he's just gonna have to stay in here. Um, right, what was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I was gonna say ones like this that are pretty well established, I think. Do I pot up as two? Because I've got a really big one here. That one, obviously, I think I'm going to pot up as its own plant. And maybe I'll do these as a little two. Let's go ahead and pop this one up anyway. I really love using these clear pots just because you can really kind of check up on the roots, get an idea of how they're doing. If you're in any doubt about things like root rot and stuff like that, it's often really easy to tell because you can see it. It's just... It's just great. 
there we go and that's that one they actually now they're in their own individual pots look like you kind of i didn't appreciate them in this way before when they were just crammed in with the big one but yeah that looks like a really beautiful little plant and look at that lovely new leaf as well it's kind of facing a bit of a strange direction but it's very pretty i love the shade of green they are when they first come in but yeah i'm gonna water all of these afterwards i'm also running out of table space i've got a long list of plants here that i was planning on getting through in this video and i think i always do i underestimated how long this was actually going to take so maybe i will just leave the rest for another video i'm not sure i mean i've been filming for just over an hour now and i feel like this is going to be a very long video and i know you've said like some of you guys have said before that you don't mind the super long videos but i'm pretty knackered <laughs> And although this is really fun, it's been more strenuous than I thought it would be. So I've also got like, I feel like I've got soil all over me. Um, right, let me finish this and then I'll see how I'm feeling. <laughs> the next question is how big should a spider plant's next pot be compared to its current pot when repotting? <laughs> God, I just said pot a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, it really, it depends on the root system of the plant. And I feel like you'll kind of be able to tell if you get it out of its pot and you see that it's got a really like I mean for example this plant really contained roots kind of suffocating each other and not having much room to kind of push out like if it's very very root bound then obviously move up more than one pot size but if if it's looking a little bit spindly if it's not a very well established root system then I really wouldn't I would say like like literally move it up like a centimeter or something like that I did actually, I repotted one of my spider plants in a video recently. I'll put a picture of it in because it had a really insane root system on it and I moved that one up about three pot sizes and it's really happy in its new pot. But sometimes you do come to repot a plant and you'll think that it's going to need a much bigger pot than it actually does. I've had that so many times before and I've got it out and I'm like, ah, actually the root system is pretty much non-existent and then... I've either just changed its soil and kept it in the same size pot until it's a bit more established or I've just moved it up very gradually if that makes sense. I hope that's clear. I hope that helps up that felt a bit a bit waffly. <laughs> it's been a busy day and I've had a glass of wine. <laughs> cool and that is that one. I'm really loving all these little fry decks like I want to start well I pretty much have got a family of fry decks. I might be really sad and put them all in a line in size order after I finish filming this video and take a photo of them. I mean, I think I probably will do that. <laughs> yes, I know that's sad. I don't care. Okay, so I've got three more and two pots. So, 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 so. This one has definitely got the biggest root system. So I'm gonna pop that in the clear pot and then these two, I think I will, I'll put these two up together. I feel like they would make a nice little, nice little plant. Someone asked if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? I mean, I guess I dream of living somewhere with a bit more sun than England on the whole. I mean, I know we're in a heat wave at the moment, but in general like our summers seem to go so quickly like we've long passed the longest day now and the evenings are definitely getting shorter it's not that late now and the sun is going down and I, just, uh, I do like good weather does just put me in such a good mood so part of me thinks I would love to live somewhere really sunny we've actually had some friends from New Zealand that have been staying with us for the last few weeks and Although New Zealand is such a long way away, I've been there a few times before and I just think, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And I love the values of the culture. I love, I won't get into politics, but I think they just on the whole do things so much better than we do over here in the UK. And I think I'd, I think I'd really feel at home there, but it's a big move to make and I wouldn't be able to take my plants with me. They are so strict about what you can bring in and out of the country. Like Mary and Andy, the people that were staying with us, the friends that were staying with us recently, they were saying you could literally get fined. And 
I don't know if it was arrested, but you can have a very big fine if you've even got an apple in your bag. Like taking a plant cutting over there, let alone a plant, would be impossible. And obviously Yoli, obviously Yoli, I would never, ever, ever leave her. And I would definitely not drag her through the trauma of moving abroad. Um, I love Greece, like, oh, me and my friends, the one that I'm going on the road trip with next week, uh, we used to go to Greece all the time together when we were younger. We both had single mums and they would take us away. They both kind of teamed up and were like, right, we've both got kids, let's go to Greece. And it became a yearly thing. And then we got to about 14, we started going by ourselves. And oh, I love it over there. I really love it over there. We've got our whole kind of Greek family over there. But at the same time, I don't, I mean, I say a, a few little Greek words here and there. I don't speak the language well at all. And culturally, like, I love it, but I can't imagine myself living there. I don't, oh, by the way, by the way, that one's done. And actually, that one looks really perfect. I really love that one. That might be my favourite so far. So yeah, I don't know what, like, what about you guys watching? Firstly, whereabouts in the world do all of you live? Like, I can see a very small breakdown of audience demographic and it looks like a lot of you live in the States, <laughs> the majority that seem to watch my videos. Um, and yeah, I'm just always intrigued about like where in the world you're watching from and yeah, where, if you could pick anywhere to live, where would it be? Or would you just be happy staying where you were? I think for now, I'm happy in the UK. I do love the UK. Like I know we're very lacking in some or a lot of areas, but also it's a beautiful country. It's a very privileged country. And I've got my lovely friends and family here and dog and plants. So for now, I think I am firmly put in the UK, but who knows in the future, who knows? <laughs> I just scrolled up to look at the next questions and my friend that I literally just mentioned, the one I went to Greece with, who is taking me on my mystery road trip next week, has asked, plants that is the most ferret-like? And this is a joke that, well, I mean, I was going to be like, oh, inside joke. It's just not one that I can even explain. Like, I've known her since we were five years old and we call ourselves the ferrets. We have a whole ferret family that branches over quite a few countries in the world now, actually. Um, I don't expect anyone to understand it. I don't even fully understand it, but plant that's the most ferret-like. Okay, I'm not gonna think about this too much. Ferrety plant. I would say it is my, probably my Lepismium bolivianum, which is, oh, you can't really see it. Hang on, I'll tilt the camera up. It is my hanging cactus here. It's just cheeky, it's a bit weird, and it has a very strange growth pattern at the moment. I would say, <laughs> just going off gut instinct, that would be my ferretiest plant. <laughs> if any of you have a gut instinct about a ferrety plant, then again, please let me know. There's no rhyme or reason behind it. There doesn't have to be any logic. It's just a plant that you feel might be a bit ferrety. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. <laughs> As I say, this surprise road trip that my friend Beck is taking me on, I have no idea where we're going. I have no idea what we're doing. I get the feeling she's planned activities and stuff. I might be totally wrong. And yeah, I think I'm going to vlog it. I think I'm going to... I've said this in another video already, so ignore me if you're listening to this for the second time. Um, but I think I'm going to make a video prepping my plants for holiday, all the things that I'm doing. And then I'm gonna do a little vlog of the road trip, potentially get some of my mum in there if she would like to join, which I doubt she will, but we'll see. Uh, and then film coming back and seeing if the system I put in place works, which I really hope it does. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited about my road trip at the end of next week. I have no idea what to expect and yeah, I just, I'm excited to get away. And I don't think I've ever had, I don't think I've ever had like a surprise anything, let alone a surprise road trip. So I am literally over the moon. <laughs> There's quite a lot of questions left that I haven't had a chance to get through. The one just above that, that is a short and simple answer is where did you get your tree of life ring, which is that one. 
That one I got from the Lanes in Brighton years ago and thank you, I really like it too. It's one that I have had on my finger for a very long time. I mean, I do take it off usually when I read pots actually. Oops, completely forgot, but yeah, thank you. Um, but what I was gonna say is I think I'm probably, I know I only did one thing in this video. I literally planned to do about six things and it's taken so much longer than I thought it would. So I think I'm gonna leave this video here and I think I will probably pick up when I'm pre-filming pre for my road trip, I will pick up and film the things that I was planning on doing Am I making any sense at all? The other things that I was planning on doing this video in a separate video, if that makes sense. But yeah, I know this was a little bit maybe waffly. I don't know, whenever I start chatting and doing things with plants, I always feel like I just go blah, blah, blah. So I hope it was enjoyable. I hope if you have been doing planty things along with this video, you've managed to get lots done. I've got like a million fry decks here to go and water now. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, one, two, three four, five, six. Ah, I potted some up together. I was like, how did I lose two? Um, but no, they're looking really gorgeous and I'm excited to have loads of this plant. <laughs> I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day or evening, and I will see you in the next video.